Hello and welcome to a new video about primatics. This time we are going to talk about the typical structure of a primatic application. Okay? What things are simply there? This is our task today that we identify those things. Okay? I now draw step by step how such primatic element is, is, is operating. Yeah? First of all, yeah? first of all, we need something which is compressing the air, yeah? which is sucking the air in, compressing the air, yeah? and putting it out somewhere at another connector. Yeah? So we need some sort of compressor. Yeah? So there is some element. Yeah? In there, there is something magically happen. Yeah? Then on one side, we usually have an intake and there's usually some sort of filter, intake filter, suction filter, intake filter, something like this, that we do not suck in also a lot of dust, something like this. Huh? So usually there's somewhere a shaft and the shaft is somehow mounted to some sort of motor. Okay. There's a motor turning, and due this turning, the air will be compressed. And here on the other side, we have compressed air with a certain pressure at a certain flow, certain pressure. The motor, you know, it can be combustion engine, can be electrical motor, something like this. So this is the compressor. Okay, it's the compressor. It's the motor. Compressor, air compressor. This is the intake filter here. And here we have compressed air. A lot of times this compressed air is sent through a thing, a cooler. So there is something like this. Yeah. In there, there are a lot of tubes or something. There is constructive simply something. So there is a cooling agent usually also used. Yeah. Might be hot air, might be water, something like this. Ah, might be cool air, of course, not hot air. Water, something like this. And here the cooling agent, the heat and cooling, the heated cooling agent is exhausted. Yeah? And here we have a cooled compressor. Yeah? So this is a cooler. Mandatory the cooler is something like this. Yeah? That we can it's a drop, yeah? a condensate trap. Yeah? Usually, if we do cool air, it's condensating. Yeah? So the, the moisture of the air is getting again to water, and this water needs to be taken out somehow. So this is the condensate trap. Yeah? Simply, the most simple one is simply you open it, close it with some sort of ball valve. Okay? Cooler. Yeah? Then usually we have a a bigger tank somewhere. Hmm? Pressure tank. Here the compressed air is, is accumulated. Hmm? Simply collected, accumulated. Here is my compressed air reservoir. Yeah? Because usually the air compressor and, and the motor and so on, they are not capable of, of having a high airflow. Yeah? So the air needs to be stored somewhere that in times I do not use compressed air. The compressed air can be refilled by the motor. Yeah? 
Yeah? After the pressure tank has reached a certain pressure limit, the motor is usually turned off, something like this. Yeah? And the pressure tank then reserves as some sort of pressure accumulator. Okay? Accumulator. Also here we have condensate trap. Very usual. And usually we also have some sort of pressure gauge that we can see how much pressure we have in there. Yeah. And there are things. A pressure relief valve. Yeah. So this is a gauge. And this is a pressure relief valve. Pressure relief valve. Pressure relief valves are mandatory, you know. If the system pressure, because if we're not, we are not switching off the compressor, yeah, it will always load and load and load the accumulator and the pressure in the accumulator will rise and rise and rise and rise and rise. And usually there is a maximum allowed system pressure and then the pressure relief valve is opened. Yeah? Usually there is some, some sort of ball inside, spring loaded. Yeah? If the pressure inside is high enough that it can open the ball, pff, it must not be a ball, it can be some other things too, a plate or something like this, something which is sealing. Yeah? And then if the pressure is high enough, it will open and pressure can be relieved. Okay? This is why the name is pressure relief valve. It's a safety measure. Maybe if you have a pressure cooker at home, uh, you have probably already seen it. If someone is cooking, I don't know, potatoes or something like this in this pressure pot, uh, there's also the pressure relief valve and at some sort of, in some point in time at cooking, it's steam is blowing off. This is exactly a uh, pressure relief. Okay. So pressure relief valve. Now we have compressed air here. Yeah. Here we have compressed air. This compressed air is, has a certain pressure. Yeah. There is a certain reservoir of compressed air. This compressed air is clean, cool, and dry. That's it. Eh? After this, eh? usually the pressures here are a little bit too high. Eh? A little bit too high. So we need to have some sort of treatment. Eh? This sort of treatment, usually there are three items. Yeah? They all look the same. Yeah, or almost the same. Often looking like this, can be three items, must not be three items. Yeah. And the pressure will go in here. What are those three items? Well, there's one item which is a filter, okay? This filter will remove the last particles which the index filter has not already taken away. So this filter will clean up the air for our application. Some fields of application requires cleaner air, some fields of application doesn't really care. Yeah? So according to the field of application, I've selected the filter. Yeah? Then we usually have something where we can adjust the pressure afterwards. Yeah? So this is a pressure control valve. Okay? And this pressure control valve, they, this is controlling the pressure after the valve. Yeah? Usually here we have a higher pressure and after the pressure control valve we have the working pressure which is lower. Yeah? So this is the pressure control valve.
there is a knob, turning knob. Uh, I can select with this turning knob how high is the pressure I want to have in my application. I can simply adjust it. There's also a pressure gauge for convenience. Uh, and then sometimes there's an oiler. Uh, sometimes we are uh, oiling the air. Yeah? When we are going to oil the air, we will hear during the videos. Yeah? So this oiler does not need to be there. Yeah? At the dentist, for example, <laughs> there is no oiler. Yeah? The turbine of the dentist, oil spitting, no, 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 no. <laughs> so it's not always there. Yeah? So this, now we have treated air. Yeah? Here we have pressure, dry, and also treated air. All parameters of the air are ready for our application. So we are going to some main valve. The main valve usually has a handle and I can switch. I can switch on and off the air yeah, in my system. So this is the main valve here. Usually the main valve also is relieving the pressure on the, on the working side. If I turn off, it's not only cut, also the pressure here is usually relieved. So if I turn it off, it might... And the system afterwards is without pressure. Okay. Here we have now air which can be turned off and turned on. Yeah? And now we go into the control part. Yeah? The control part, there are maybe some sort of, of cylinders somewhere. Yeah? There are different types of cylinders. We are going to hear that. The cylinders might be spring-loaded, yeah? might not be spring-loaded. Cylinders can travel out and in. Yeah? If it's spring-loaded, there's only one line going in. If it's not spring-loaded, there are two lines. If I put in the pressure on this side, it will travel this way. If I put in the pressure this side, it will travel this way. And here it's a spring. If there is no pressure, it will go inside. If there is pressure, it will go out. Okay? So then there are some elements which can switch the pressure in and out. Yeah? Usually, there's somehow there's somewhere a piston inside which can be moved left and right, and and then closing this and this. So these are working elements, yeah. And those are simply connected with tubes, with hoses, something like this. Yeah? And maybe, maybe there is also something which is throttling, hmm? which is somehow, there's usually some sort of element, adjustable element, some sort of hole here, where I can adjust how fast or how many air is flowing through. Yeah? So this is control elements, different control elements, and usually there are also those sort of, of, of valves yeah. here we have a pressure relief, here we have the pressure intake here we have also pressure relief yeah. there's also some sort of piston inside In this position, for instance, here the pressure line is now going to here, and this will travel inwards. Yeah? And this side is connected, and here we can... Here is the exhaust opening. Here the, the air is just going into the atmosphere again. Okay? So, this is how a pneumatic system looks usually. Yeah? We can identify some parts. Yeah? 
this part here. This is the pressure generation part. This is the pressure generation. Okay. Then we have this part here. The treatment part processing or treatment part. And then we have this part here, which can also be divided, but this is the control part. Working elements, these working elements here in this case are cylinders. We have control elements. Which are controlling what the cylinders are doing. Okay. The, the, this is the typical structure of a compressed air system, of a pneumatic system. Uh, we have pressure generation, we have treatment part, we have control part, and we're going to talk about all those parts in the next few videos. Uh, we're going to talk about compressors, we're going to talk about controllers, we, we're going to talk about well, pressure tanks. With the, not really, yeah, it's just a tank, a vessel. And then there is the treatment part, we're going to talk about the filter, the pressure control valve, the oiler, and then we are going to talk about big part, about the control part. First, we're then going to talk about the working elements. Yeah? Then we're talking about the control elements, valves, and so on. And yeah, this is our topics. These are our topics in the next few, in the next few videos. Yeah, for this time, you have an overview, hopefully. Yeah? Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.